Okay, great. It is my great pleasure to sit down with Dr. Paula Reimer, the AIA's 2021 Pomerantz Award winner for scientific contributions to archaeology. Dr. Reimer is director of the 14 Chrono Center for Climate, the Environment, and Chronology at Queen's University Belfast. Since 2002, she has chaired the working group responsible for providing the series of internationally agreed radiocarbon calibration curves known as INCAL, establishing these as the global standard for the creation of a reliable radiocarbon timescale. These curves form a critical underpinning of the breadth of archaeological science. Dr. Reimer's work is fundamental to the study of our past. So welcome, Dr. Reimer. Thank you. Um, Thank you. It's a pleasure to sit down with you and get a chance to chat. Um, so I have a couple of questions that people are interested in. The first one is, how did you get your start? Well, I started out in physics uh, as an undergraduate and then a master's in biophysics. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but after that, I really, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, I hadn't picked up on anything that really excited me. So my husband and I, he moved to Seattle where he started his PhD there. And um, I taught at a community college for a bit, but uh, then I took a, a, a position with uh, Dr. Minza Stiver in the Kutrune Isotope Lab as a technician. So I prepared samples and uh, put the gas into the counters, that kind of thing. <clears throat> and then gradually we, we got a, a, big, a mini computer to help with analysis for oxygen uh, in ice cores. And they needed someone with computer experience, which I had for my physics. And I went off and got a little bit of training. And so then I, I was the systems manager for the computer and um, did all of the graphics and you know all of this and started working on, uh, under his direction, uh, one of the calibration curves in 1986, uh, was the first calibration curve that we put together. And um, mm -hmm. so that was the start. <laughs> wow, wow, that's great. Um, would you, can you tell us what you consider your greatest scientific achievement? <clears throat> well, I think that having created the INCAL working group uh, will be the most lasting thing I've done. Uh, even, there, was, there was calibration before that and uh, Minza Stiver, uh, who sadly passed away this last week, uh, he was working on this with other people. And so they, eventually it was, called INCAL already, but we didn't have, there wasn't a, a permanent group. Mm -hmm. So I got a little bit of funding from Leverhulme Trust for some meetings and uh, an assistant to help with the database. And that's when we put together uh, the curve with, with the, the group, we put together the group. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> Great. Great. Um, so what would you say has been your most fascinating discovery or work project to date? <clears throat> well, I've, I've worked with a lot of people doing exciting things, um, but really it's the Intel working group again, because I was able to work with oceanographers, atmospheric scientists, archeologists, uh, statisticians, and learn so much from them. Uh, as we put things together over the over time, uh, it's been it's been really exciting. That that interdisciplinary aspect, yes, yes. Um, okay, well, what what would you say has been your greatest professional challenge? Um, <clears throat> setting up uh, AMS laboratory here, the Chrono Center, um, because it has both uh, the science aspect. You doing research grants and all this, but there's the managerial part, the financial part, and uh, you know, keeping it afloat essentially has, has been a challenge. Right, and, and I, I think people would be interested in also how you moved from Seattle to Belfast. Ah, yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, <clears throat> about the time that uh, Professor Stiver retired, I, I just had gotten my PhD at that point. Mm -hmm. And um, so 
was looking around for something to do, a postdoc. And one of the um, people that worked in calibration, Jerry McCormick, uh, um, I, I wrote to him and asked him about a particular job that was someone else was uh, at the university here had offered or had advertised. And he said, you don't want that job. You want to come work for me? And I said, <laughs> OK. <laughs> so I came and worked for him for three years on a postdoc. And then I went, um, after that ended, went to California to Lawrence Livermore Labs. Mm -hmm. Right. And, the right. There. Mm -hmm. and that, that's where I learned about AMS, because all, always before, in Menzies lab, it was gas counting. In Jerry McCormick's lab, it was liquid scintillation counting. Both of these are beta decay uh, systems. But then in the AMS is a direct measurement of the isotope values. And so that's what I, I learned while I was in California. And then um, Jerry and other people got money for an AMS system and asked me back. So okay. I came back to run the system. Okay, great. Now, for people who don't really know much about the science, can you tell us what AMS stands for? <clears throat> it's accelerator mass spectrometry. Okay, great. Um, thank you. Thank you. That's, that's terrific. Well, I really appreciate your taking the time to sit down with us. Um, it's such a pleasure to meet you virtually. Um, congratulations on your award. And I look forward to seeing you again virtually <laughs> at the <laughs> award ceremony um, in about 10 days. Okay, thank you again. Thank you very much. Um.